Welcome. This is the uh, Algebra 1 end of course practice test 2. Question number 60. The question says simplify x squared minus 7x plus 12 over x plus 4 times 1 over 3 minus x completely for all values of x for which the expression is defined. Which means that you don't have to worry about any of the exclusions in the domain business. So you're good to go. Now this question I'm going to solve two ways. Number one, a mathematically appropriate way. And the second way is a cheap calculator trick that I'm not proud of, but it does work, whatever. Anyway. Um, when I look at this question, I see that x squared minus 7x plus 12 business. That tells to me that I'm going to be factoring. So I'm going to go ahead and write out x squared minus 7x plus 12. This sign tells me my factored answer signs are going to be the same. Because if it was plus, I put either plus plus, or it's going to be x plus, or x minus, and the other one's going to be the same thing. This sign tells me exactly what it is, so they're both going to be x minus. The nice thing about having the signs be the same, it means when I do my factor list for 12, I'm looking to add those factors together. So I've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. 1 plus 12 is 13. That doesn't get me to the 7 I'm looking for, so that's out. 2 plus 6 gets me to 8. No. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. Ding, ding, ding. There it is. So if I do 3 here and 4 here, I know I'm factored out. So that's the first factoring part. Now. I'm going to erase this to give it a little bit of a cleaner look, more or less. And then I'm going to look at everything else that I've got. x plus 4. I'm going to bring my 3 minus x down. And I'm going to go ahead and switch that around, this 3 minus x, into negative x plus 3. All I did is change the order of them. It just looks nicer to have that x in the front so I can make comparison statements in just a second. And that times 1 on the top doesn't really mean anything. It's just there as a placeholder. So now I'm left with this. If we look at the x plus 4 and x minus 4 thing, they look very much alike. The difference is the sign in front of the 4. So the integer sign is different. But the sign in front of the x is the same, which means it's very unlikely that we'll be able to eliminate anything with those two. So they'll probably stay in some form. Now the x minus 3 and the negative x plus 3 is a different animal altogether. The reality is that both of the signs in or both signs in front of the uh, integer and in front of the variable are different, which means that I can change one of those groups by factoring out a negative 1, make my life much better. So what I'm going to do is take the top one, just because it's up there, and I'm going to factor out negative 1, which will change the sign. This one will become negative x plus uh, Three, this one becomes negative x and the 3 becomes plus 3. So I'm going to rewrite this one as negative x plus 3 and then I've got this negative 1 that I pulled out in the beginning. So now I can eliminate like terms. So this is the same as this, so those are gone. Let's erase those. So we're left with one final statement. And it looks very much like we're going to pick D here. However, just like any small group of friends, the negative 1 ruins everything. Because that negative 1 is there on top, I do have to go back in and multiply using the distributive property, the, the numerator. So I get negative x, uh, negative 1 times x becomes negative x. And then I do negative 1 times negative 4, which gives me plus 4. And on the bottom, I end up with x plus 4. Now it doesn't look like d at all. But if we flip the order, like I want to put the positive one in the numerator on, in front, so the 4 goes in front, so it becomes 4 minus x because of the commutative relationship of addition. And then the other one, I'll make it look the same, and I get 4 plus x. So the answer to this one is C. Really annoying, right? They threw that negative 1 on you and messed everything up. It's not really that difficult to grasp it. It's just really easy to go for D there. So if you do factor out a negative 1 to change those signs, make sure you go back and adjust for it when you get to your final answer. Otherwise, you'll pick the wrong one. Now, I said something about some easy calculator method, and you probably shut your brain off while I talked about factoring. Uh, hopefully not, but you know, that's what most people tend to do. I'm going to try to bring up my handy dandy calculator here. It just takes a second. And I need to quit out of this section and clear it off. Here it is. Now, you have an x value for a variable. Look at it. It should be something like 10. If it's not, go into the window, change the x max and x min, and then uh, graph something that's linear, like 4x plus 9 or something. And it'll, ma it'll make your x value whatever you want it to be. If I change it to negative 5 and 5, I can change my x value to 5. As long as it's not 0, you're in good shape. So what we're going to do is make it look exactly like this up here. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, put the x squared minus 7x in parentheses. So I get x squared minus 7x plus 12. Then I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to divide it by x plus 4. That's the first part, and I get 3. So I'm going to keep that 3 in my head, and then on the other side, I'm going to do 1 divided by 3 minus x, and I'm going to get this number, negative 0.14. I'm going to multiply that times 3. That's my number and my answer choices that I'm looking for. So I need to write down somewhere uh, like negative 4 point or point four two eight five seven on and on and on. You're probably pretty good after about uh, four decimal points, but whatever. Um, from here, I just need to plug in my answers. Obviously, A and B aren't going to work. So let's do the one that we predicted the answer was. So if I do 4 minus x, close that out, divided by 4 plus x, and close this, hit enter, you see they're exactly the same. So you can say, yeah, well, C is the right answer here. But let's look at the possibility of it being D just to prove that that one isn't the correct answer because really I could just be making this trick up and you could find out that it's not right. The problem with this trick is you do have to be super accurate and it's really annoying to plug it all in but plus it won't help you in the future if you're doing something that's not multiple choice but this is like bottom of the barrel attempt. You'll notice that this is 0.4 but this is negative and this one's not so that's the difference between those two and uh, that's it for this one. Uh, it's a really sort of an annoying problem but not really that hard so good luck.